Hi folks, welcome to LEA 560 Effective Team Leadership. My name is Dr. Anthony Adams and I'm your instructor for the class. And I wanted to take a few moments to talk to you about one of the major themes that you find within your text, Team of Teams by General Stanley McChrystal. And that is complexity theory. Um, I It's challenging and yet I think it's going to be extremely helpful to you uh, in everything that you're doing. So uh, it should be a pretty good study. First place we want to start is with reductionism and limiting factors. Uh, basically reductionism is a theory that a particular phenomenon can be explained if you just analyze the simplest, most basic physical mechanisms that are in operation during the phenomenon. So in other words, to really understand this thing as a whole, what you need to do is to break this down to its most basic of parts. So here's an uh, example of what I'm talking about when you start dealing in reductionism. Um, Let's say, for instance, that you're looking at the thought and you're looking at brain activity. Well, in order to really understand thought, to really understand how the mind thinks, in reductionism, what you would do is you would, would reduce this entire proposition or study down to uh, brain activity. And if you can understand brain activity, then the second phenomenon, which is thought, will then be understood. Now, so obviously in reductionism, uh, one of the problems with that is that it deals with more systems type thinking. You're going, it's linear. It's, well, if I do this, then this will produce this. This is different from complex theory. And uh, that's what we're going to be talking about now. So. To understand complex theory, there are three things that you need to recognize. There is, first of all, simple. Uh, there are simple systems, and a good example of a simple system would be baking a cake. When you bake a cake, you if you're like me, now you're not going to do it completely from scratch, but you'll go get a Betty Crocker cake mix or whatever it happens to be, and you'll open up that cake mix and you'll uh, you'll read the instructions. And on the instructions, you know, you'll empty out the contents, maybe add an egg or two, whichever it calls for, add some oil. If there's some other elements that needs to go in there, depending on the cake that you have, and you'll mix all of that up, maybe some milk or water, and that uh, tells you the temperature that you need to cook that at, and there's certain things, you let it cool, and then you're able to put the icing on, and, and sometimes they cut them in half, and they put a filler in there, and those types of things. But the reality is, it's, it's, it's a simple um, system where that there are linear instructions, do this, do this, do this, do this, and it gives a pretty predictable outcome. Then there is complicated. Now I've got constructing a building or possibly another one would be uh, creating an airplane. Uh, but in, in either case, there are a tremendous amount of parts that are involved in, uh, in complicated uh, situations. Uh, there's lots of various and diverse elements each has its own role in the machinery or each has its own role in what it's supposed to do. So for instance, uh, you have a lot of, if you're constructing a building, you have experts who are going to coordinate uh, many sets of instructions. Uh, for instance, you, you're going to have somebody who's going to purchase the property. You're going to have to make sure that the engineers will check and make sure that the property will support the, the building that you're wanting to put on it. Uh, there is not only your engineers, then you have your architect who has to actually design the building. You have your designers who have a certain thing that they're looking for, uh, the branding that they have for the building. You usually have a project manager that's overseeing the entire thing. You've got a financing person who's making sure that everything's being paid for. You have contractors, you have subcontractors, and the list can just go on of all of the things. But each has a specific role, 
and it's all working towards a specific thing. And then you have your complex, uh, your complex system. And a complex system, uh, an example of that might be sustaining a business or raising a child. You know, you may have raised one child, but that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the second child you raise is going to turn out exactly like the first one. Uh, I've got three kids. Every one of my kids are different. They all have their own personalities and their own, you know, ideas and all of that. So uh, there's various things that goes along with that. So having said that, uh, the, the complex, uh, there's many interacting parts which builds or sometimes replaces, created or causes the emergence of new knowledge, something brand new. So it's important to realize that complicated is not complex. Sometimes people like to use those interchangeably, but they're not. Um, the, actually, one again has many different parts that each part plays a specific role towards a designed or desired end whereas in complex uh, there are some characteristics to that uh, the first thing is there's many interacting parts you have different ones that come together and we're all sharing ideas and we're talking about this coming from different backgrounds all of these things they're simple rules that takes place you're allowed to you know brainstorm you're allowed to to come and communicate and talk and analyze and evaluate and come up with new ideas and whatever you're going to do and then all of this produces emergent properties or if you will, it produces this idea of synergy. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And, and you can see this. In fact, I want you to think about this in the realm of God and how that with God, every time we come together and we decide on a course of action, we make a decision for every decision that we make, there are, if we had taken another decision, that might have actually uh, brought about a whole other outcome or uh, a whole other path that we might have taken. It might have caused us to do all kinds of different things. Um, God foresees all of that. He knows the beginning from the end, and somehow he sees all of these possibilities and in his infinite wisdom is able to figure out exactly what you're going to do and how you're going it, to, it's, it's boggles the mind. It's, it's so much greater than we are. But this is the idea of comp, uh, complex theory or complexity theory, and that's the idea that in a complex system, they all come together and they're all then doing certain things and it, it evolves into emergent properties, into new ideas and new thoughts and, and things such as that. This brings me to, and your book will talk about this, the butterfly effect. And uh, the butterfly effect is a form of chaos theory or describes chaos theory. It basically says that one change in one state of a deterministic nonlinear system. In other words, you've got this complex system where they're all there. It's not a linear system where every, every piece has its purpose and it's all working towards a desired end. But in a complex system, one change can result in larger differences at a, late, at a later state. Now, here's an important thing, and General McChrystal brings this out, and that is that the butterfly effect is not leverage. It's not, well, now, if I can just change something, if I can just change something, that's going to then cause there to be a different outcome. The, the point to the butterfly effect is that small things may have no effect whatsoever small things may end up having a massive effect, like the butterfly, the, 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 the wind from the butterfly wings could, could have a chain reaction that will cause, uh, you know, some kind of hurricane somewhere. Uh, but the reality is it may not have any. 
It just depends as they come together what emerges from these particular variables that come together. Benjamin Franklin had a, uh, a good poem and it's kind of an example of the butterfly effect. It's kind of simple, but it's, it's pretty good. He says, for want of a nail, the shoe was lost. For want of a shoe, the horse was lost. And for want of a horse, the rider was lost. Being overtaken and slain by the enemy, all for want of care about a horseshoe nail. It's this idea that, that as we come together, there are different outcomes that can take place depending on the decisions and the combinations that come together. Think about uh, who you were when you were single, if you, if you happen to be married. Um, and if you are single, this might be important to you. Um, when, when you're single, listen, there are certain things that you do. You're kind of an entity into yourself and you're influenced maybe by your friends and those that you're around. But when you get married and you come together, it then produces something completely different depending on who you have come together with. And then the more that adds to your family, the more that you end up having with all of that. So this brings us then to complexity leadership. Not just complexity theory, but complexity leadership. And complexity leadership is where that entrepreneurial leadership um, is in conflict with operational leadership. And what happens, uh, they, they get in conflict with these types of things. Well, these ideas are not implementable. I mean, you can't, you couldn't do these types of things, or it's just going to cost too much money. We can't do that. Or uh, it requires resources that the organization just does not have. Or uh, it goes against the organization's predominant identity. We are this, and so we can't do that because it goes against this. What, what complexity leadership does is it creates an adaptive space where all of the different players, all of the different entities come together. And as they come together, it's known as an adaptive space. And you're, they're conflicting, they're connecting, uh, there's reintegration, there's working together. Some ideas are thrown out into space, some come together, but the reality is, the role of the leader that we're going to be talking about um, in, uh, in lecture four uh, is some of the roles of the leader. But part of the role of the leader is actually to create places for organizational adaptability. And that's kind of the key to what we're, we're looking at with all of this. So that's complexity theory. And uh, we're going to be talking about some of the structure for complexity theory as we move forward with this. Uh, we're gonna be talking, and, and that'll be really strategic team leadership. We're gonna be talking about silos uh, and uh, cross-organizational communication. I think that'll be important to you as we're studying this. Uh, as I said, uh, we're gonna be talking about the uh, Gardner and natural church, Gardner theory and natural church development theory. And I think that'll be important. And then lecture five, we're gonna be dealing with uh, communication strategies for difficult conversations. And they're never easy. And there's some strategies that are involved within this. And uh, we'll talk about those. Make sure you do your reading. And I look forward to interacting with you as we progress along. God bless you.